Hello and welcome to Calix TV. Today is Monday the 3rd of March. Ukraine's crisis has been described as the worst crisis in Europe in the 21st century as more Russian armoured troops have been seen massing on the border of Crimea today. Frantic efforts on the diplomatic front continue. Russia has vowed its troops will remain in Ukraine to protect Russian interests and citizens until the political situation has been quote normalised. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said Russia was defending human rights against ultra-nationalist threats. Russia is now in de facto military control of the Crimea region despite Western condemnation of the violence and the violation of Ukraine's sovereignty. Ukraine has ordered full mobilization to counter the military intervention. Crimea is the main flashpoint. There are also demonstrations in eastern Ukraine. Some 2,000 people waving Russian flags gathered at the regional government building in Donetsk to protest at the appointment of the new Kiev governor. Dozens later occupied the first floor of the building in Donetsk, which is the hometown of ousted pro-Russian uh, former President Viktor Yanukovych. Mr. Lavrov said in Geneva today that the Russian troops were needed in Ukraine until the normalization of the political situation. Uh, according to border guards, Russia has started building up armored vehicles on the Russian side of the narrow stretch of water between Russia and the Ukrainian region of Crimea. Um, a border guard spokesman told Reuters news agency that Russian ships had been moving in and around the Crimean port of Sebastopol where the Russian Black Sea Fleet has a base and that Russian forces have, have blocked military, uh, mobile telephone service in some parts of the Crimea. Now in Pakistan a roadside bomb has struck tribal police assigned to guard polio workers in the northwest of the country killing at least 12 people. 11 soldiers and one child reportedly amongst those killed on Saturday's attack in the Jamrod area northwest Khyber tribal agency of Pakistan. Um, at least 10 others were injured. Elsewhere, a separate bomb blast killed at least three parliamentary soldiers and, and wounded six others. The roadside bomb hit a patrol vehicle around 200 kilometers south of Quetta on the main road, linking it to the port of Karachi, according to the AFP news agents, agency. Now, 13 students and two teachers have been killed after their bus crashed into a truck in the eastern part of Thailand. At least 15 people, including the 13 students and two teachers, have been killed as they were travelling in eastern Thailand. Police Lieutenant Colonel uh, Tam Ravakan said the bus lost control on Friday morning on a downhill roll and slammed into the truck which was in front of it. The bus was carrying students from age between 10 and 15 from their school to the beachside town of Patea. Police are searching for the bus driver who, who fled the scene and are investigating if the crash was caused by a brake problem. Berkshire Hathaway has posted $3 billion of underwriting profit. The, large, the lack of large catastrophe claims in 2013 helped Warren Buffett's reinsurance empire notch up a pre-tax underwriting profit of $3.089 billion, the highest the conglomerate for the conglomerate since the post-Katrina underwriting year of 2006 and 2007. Leading the way was a Jeep Jane's Berkshire Hathaway reinsurance group, which additionally takes a significant positions on catastrophe risks. The uh, Berkshire Hathaway Reinsurance Group posted a pre-tax underwriting profit of $1.29 billion against a $304 million uh, profit in 2012 and a loss of $714 million in the cat heavy year of 2011. Jane's business volumes are down, however, with the ending of the Swiss Re 20% quota share contract for the year 2012. Berkshire Hathaway's specialty insurance, the audacious uh, commercial PNC startup launched by Berkshire Hathaway last year, will write, quote, billions within a few years, committed the conglomerate CEO Warren Buffett over this weekend. Writing in his annual, uh, annual letter to Berkshire Hathaway shareholders, Buffett predicted the insurer will be a major asset for Berkshire, one that would generate volume in the billions within a few years. Berkshire Hathaway did not disclose how much BHSI has written since its, since its uh, launch last April. Buffett told shareholders in his first of May dated letter that BHSI's founding CEO P.D. Eastwood had assembled a spectacular team and is already writing a substantial amount of business with many Fortune 500 companies with smaller operations as well. Uh, an American customer, I think unsurprisingly we'll see a few of these, an American customer has filed damages lawsuit against N.T. Gox, the first such case against the Tokyo-based trouble major Bitcoin exchange. Mount Gox filed for bankruptcy protection in Tokyo on Friday after it abruptly closed all transactions earlier this week. The exchange, which is believed to have some 1.1 million customer accounts, could face a slew of similar lawsuits in the US and other countries. According to a complaint filed with Federal District Court in Illinois, 
on Thursday, a male customer suffered, suffered a loss due to a plunge in the price of Bitcoin after Mt. Gox called it all withdrawals from its from its website on February the 7th due to a computer bug. And finally today, news from the Oscars. The former head of Lloyd's underwriter Beasley's Accident and Health Division, Chris Branch, found Oscar glory last night when the documentary he co-produced, which is called The Lady in Number 6, won an award for Best Documentary Short. Branch left the Lloyd's reinsurer at the end of 2013. He joined the firm in November 2008 when Beasley acquired Momentum Underwriting Management, the ANH MGA he co-founded. Directed by Malcolm Clark, The Lady in Number 6 tells a remarkable story of a renowned concert pianist, Alice Hertz Sommer, who was the world's oldest known Holocaust survivor until her death last week. That's all from us today. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow. Until then, thank you very much and goodbye.